starting off this countdown, we have the Smile Mask. In the wake of World War I, Budapest, Hungary saw a lot of their residents take their own lives. One way they thought they could handle this problem was through Smile School. Yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. It started as a joke by Professor Gino and a hypnotist named Bingso, but then it actually turned into a real life thing. Basically, it was a school that taught everyone about smiles and analyzed different people's smiles, like the Mona Lisa smile. One thing that they invented at the school was the smile mask. It was given to people with depression to wear and was believed to cure it. Basically, it was like a card with a painted smile on it that was then strapped to your face. It was thought that just by wearing a fake smile, it would automatically cure your depression. But in reality, it looks terrifying, like some sort of torture device from the Saw movies. I don't think this worked. If anything, it would have made the depression worse. Like, who wants to walk around wearing that 24-7? In our ninth spot, we have the guillotine. I'm sure you all know about this execution device. If not, pay attention in school, okay? So this consists of a razor sharp blade attached to a rope. The victim's head was placed in the middle of the frame and then the blade was dropped. And well, you know, the head would be severed from the rest of the body. At least it was quick and easy. As a result, they considered it to be the most humane method of execution. But still, let's not bring this back, okay? Okay. Moving on to number eight, we have the social credit system. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to smash that like button. So this next one is literally a Black Mirror episode in real life. Basically, there is a system in the works that will record your behavior and hand out points as a result. They will monitor your online presence as well as your financial wealth and how social you are. The better this all is, then the better your score will be. People then can check those scores like future employers and those with better scores will do better in society. Believe it or not, but they are already using this in China. They're currently enrolling everyone into a national database and ranking every citizen. Like I said before, this is literally like that one episode from Black Mirror. If you've seen it, then you know exactly what I'm talking about and you'll also know why it's a bad idea. In our seventh spot today, we have the tub and I'm not talking about a bathtub. No, no, this is another torture device used in medieval ages. So this involves placing the convicted person in a wooden tub, only their head would be sticking out. Their face would then be painted with milk and honey, attracting flies and other insects. They would then feast on the person. You thought that was bad? Well, they would continue to feed the victim so they would, you know, have to do their business in the bathtub and then sit in their own waist. But eventually they were basically eaten alive by insects, which is horrifying. In our sixth spot today, we have the automatic tip requester. This next device was invented in 1955 by a man named Russell E. Oakes. It was designed primarily for hotel bellhops. So basically what it is, is this creepy hand that would strap onto their back. It literally looks like an arm is growing out of their lumbar spine. But anyways, after they helped the guest, the guest could then tip the bellhop by putting money on the creepy hand. The money would then fall into a cash box that was also strapped onto the bellhop. Here's the thing though, if the tip was too low, a no sale sign would pop up and inform the tipper that their tip was not enough. Which I mean, if you ask me, is really embarrassing. Like imagine tipping someone and they're like, oops, sorry, that's not enough. Like we actually need more. So awkward. So I can see why that flopped. Not only that, but the hand on the back just looks really freaking creepy. Like, am I staying at the haunted mansion or what? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the heretic's fork. Basically, this was a torture device that consisted of a wrench type device that was strapped to a victim's neck, except both ends were super sharp. One end was pushed under the victim's chin, the other against their sternum. They were then strapped in and hung from the ceiling. Now, they had to keep their head up, because if they dropped it, then this device was going into their chest and their throat. So I'll say it so you guys don't have to. Disgusted? Seriously. Ugh. Moving on to number four, we have the Whispering Grocery Store. Like, this just sounds creepy, and it is. So what if you were out shopping, and all of a sudden you heard someone whispering in your ear? Wouldn't that freak you out? Well, companies are trying to make this a thing. 
where they have ads playing in grocery stores. So when you're looking at a product, the voice will be telling you all the reasons why you should buy that product. Uh, that sounds an awful lot like mind control to me. No thank you. Now, a company called the Holosonics has invented something called the Audio Spotlight System. Basically, they are tiny speakers that can be used for this, in-store advertising. But you have to be standing in the right place to hear it. It's not just like a bunch of ads playing at the same time through the grocery store's big PA system. No, that would be hectic. This is just like, no, just think of like going to a museum and listening to something that tells you about the piece of art that you're looking at. That's what it is, but 10 times creepier and totally unnecessary. Moving on to number three, we have coffin torture. Back in the day, people had some sick torture inventions. Seriously, it's like they had fun inventing the most gruesome ways for people to die. This being one of them. Coffin torture involved placing the accused inside a caged coffin. They're locked in, so they can't move at all. Sometimes they were even stripped naked before being placed in there. And then they were hung somewhere for everyone to see. The time they were stuck in there depended on their crime. Most were just left there to die, falling victim to dehydration or malnutrition. Some would even be picked to death by birds and insects. And again, they couldn't do anything about it because they were completely immobile. Coming in at number two, we have the knee splitter. And it's as bad as it sounds. This was another pretty gruesome torture device from the medieval ages. Basically, the device was two wood blocks connected by two large screws, and it was lined with sharp spikes. This was then placed on the front of the knee and then directly behind. Then it was turned, and the blocks would move closer and closer to each other. Then the sharp metal would just dig deeper and deeper into the flesh. You get it, okay? It would completely destroy the victim's knees, and it would probably be super painful. And in our number one spot today, we have the TV that watches you. Technology is getting way too advanced, like people need to calm down. Well, Verizon has a patent for this smart TV that watches your every move. It's terrifying. It can detect your movements, sounds, and reactions to what you're watching. It then records it and creates ads that are geared specifically towards you. No thank you. Isn't that terrifying? Like, you won't have any privacy anymore. I swear, you can Google toilet plungers once, and for the next week, all the ads on your computer are gonna be for toilet plungers. It's already intense. But this, this has gone way too far. Not only that, but like, let's say you and your spouse are fighting while your TV is on. It's gonna detect this and legit start making ads for like couples counseling. I'm not making that up. It's insane. This is too far. Just stop. Just let us watch TV in peace. Starting off this countdown, we have the nose stylus. The fact that this is even a thing is insane. So the nose stylus is just as it sounds. A stylus you put on your nose to use your phone. But it makes you look like a terrifying version of Pinocchio or a freaking plague doctor. Like, I'm sorry, but it looks terrifying. But it's marketed as a way to use your phone hands-free. You just attach this thing onto your nose and you scroll away. I'm sorry, but it just seems like way too much work. I think it's easier for me to just use my hands. Plus, in all the advertisements, it shows the dude having one hand on the phone. So technically, it's not hands-free. The inventor claims that he came up with this idea when he was taking a bath and wanted to use his phone, but didn't want his wet hands to touch his phone. Dude, if you need to use your phone in the bath, then like, that's insane. That's a phone addiction right there. I don't know, I just find this whole thing pointless and also very creepy. Like, come on, that whole thing is nightmare fuel. If I saw someone wearing that, I'd legit think that they were a demon or something. Moving on to number nine, we have the tanning beds. Now, this one probably seems like a weird invention to have on this list, but tanning beds are so bad for us, but people still continue to use them. For a while, people thought that tanning beds were safer than tanning in the sun. Wrong. They're both equally bad. In reality, tanning beds tremendously increase your risk of developing skin cancer. It also causes premature aging, and uh, trust me, no one wants wrinkles. So the UV radiation you are exposed to from tanning beds can promote skin cancer in two ways. One, it damages the DNA in your skin cells, which can cause the skin to grow abnormally and cause benign or malignant growths to develop. Or two, it can weaken the body's immune system, which affects the body's natural defenses against cancer cells. The most dangerous form of skin cancer is melanoma. 
It accounts for most of the deaths due to skin cancer each year. Hence why tanning beds are not a smart invention. Like, it slowly kills you after every use. Moving on to number eight, we have the Roman candle. This is considered one of the most brutal methods of torture in the ancient world. So first, the unlucky victim would be tied to a stake and then nailed to it. Then they were covered in flammable liquid and set on fire. Hence why they were called the Roman candle. They were literally turned into human candles. This was a slow and painful way to go. Emperor Nero was known for using this as his preferred method of execution. In fact, he would use his victims literally as torches for his garden parties. Yeah, you heard me. This dude used real life people to light up his garden. That's just sick and incredibly twisted. In our seventh spot today, we have the 3D printed death machine. Recently, a man named Dr. Philip Nishk announced he created a 3D printed death machine known as the Sarco, short for the sarcophagus. Basically, it's a way for people to take their own lives. Literally, I'm not making this up. Who the hell would even think of creating such a thing? Obviously this guy. Anyways, the person would willingly climb into the device and slowly it would suck out all the oxygen in there so that they would slip unconscious and then die. He said it's a way to take people's lives more peacefully. But not everyone can use this device. Apparently people that have been deemed mentally fit and have a legit reason for wanting to die can only use it. Obviously it's a very, very controversial invention. Moving on to number six, we have the lead sprinkler. Back in the day, people were wilding. I swear, they had contests to see who could come up with the most disturbing and gruesome torture devices out there. Like, who the heck thinks of these things? Like this device. So the lead sprinkler was a device that was filled with typically molten lead. But in other cases, it would be filled with tar, boiling oil, or even boiling water. Basically, they just wanted some sort of liquid that would burn the victim's skin right off. So basically, the victim was tied down and then the liquid in the device was sprinkled all over them, typically on their stomach or eyes. If it was poured on the eyes, it would cause the victim to go blind. If they wanted to kill the victim, they would fill the device with molten silver. That would lead to an excruciating pain until their death. So the only sprinkler I want to remember and use is the garden sprinkler. We're now in our fifth and halfway mark with the tongue terror. And yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. It was a device used to rip off or cut off a victim's tongue. First, there was a part of the device that would open the victim's mouth nice and wide. It was called the mouth opener. Very creative name, I know. So once their mouth was forced open, the tongue terror would grab the tongue with its grippers. Once it's got a good grip, it was twisted and this would cause it to become tighter and tighter on the victim's tongue. It took about three twists before the tongue would just rip off completely. Yeah, no thank you, I like my tongue the way it is. Coming in at number four, we have the cement shoes. So this next invention was actually invented by the American Mafia. They would use it to execute their enemies. Basically, it involves placing their victim's feet inside of cinder blocks. They were then filled with wet cement. Once it was dried, they would obviously have cement all around their feet, which is incredibly heavy if you didn't know. They were then tossed into bodies of water like rivers or lakes or even the ocean. And the person would sink right down to the bottom and drown. That way, there was no mess that they had to clean up and it would be harder for them to find the person's body unless someone decided to dive deep down to the ocean floor. It's believed that criminals still use this to this day, which is terrifying. There could be hundreds of dead bodies out there that we just haven't found yet. Coming in at number three, we have the crocodile shears. What's more terrifying than a crocodile, you ask? An alligator, no, I'm just kidding. This invention known as the crocodile shears. So these were invented and used in late medieval Europe. They were typically used for men that tried to assassinate the king. And dude, this was a brutal form of torture. So this device was made of metal and it basically was like a big pair of scissors lined with spikes on both ends that looked like crocodile teeth. Now take a guess at where these shears were placed. Hmm, right down on the male's private parts. In fact, sometimes they were heated to make it even worse. Then they were just placed down there and closed so it would snip it right off. I know a bunch of you just flinched. Yeah, I can't imagine how painful that would be. Sometimes the victim would live, 
Other times, if it struck an artery, they would bleed to death. Moving on to number two, we have the Spanish Tickler. But don't be fooled by the name, okay? This device does anything but tickle you. But can we talk about tickling for a second? Like, that is a messed up form of torture on its own. Like, when you get tickled, it hurts like crazy, but at the same time, it makes you laugh. Like, make up your mind. Is it fun or is it painful? It's... I hate it, okay? Anyways, the Spanish Tickler was the set of metal claws that one could slip their hands into. The device often had three or four claws or sharp curved spikes attached to it. And like I said, it's not used for tickling. Instead, the person wearing it could dig the claws into someone's flesh and then rip it away. It literally was strong enough to tear muscle and flesh right off the victim's bones. This device also came in a variety of sizes and colors. Fun fact. Often, this device wouldn't be used to kill the victim, but instead just leave them severely wounded. And in our number one spot today, we have the scavenger's daughter. This next invention is incredibly messed up and brutal. It was created by Sir Leonard Skevington during the reign of Henry VIII. Basically, it was a metal rack that was shaped kind of like in an A. It would then be wrapped around a person in a crouched position. Their head was strapped to the top point of the A, the hands would be at the midpoints, and the legs near the lower ends. The frame would then fold, forcing the person's head to their knees and knees to their head, crushing them into a tiny ball. It would squeeze them so tight until blood would pour out from their nose and ears. Yeah, no thank you. No thank you. And I'm glad that this isn't a thing anymore because it was mainly used for women. Starting off this countdown, we have lead paint. Exposure to even low levels of lead can cause serious damage, especially to children. Homes built before the 1960s most likely contain lead-based paint. This becomes a problem if the paint chips, peels, or flakes off, because then you have the risk of inhaling the lead paint particles. In fact, back in the day, lead acetate was used in the paint so that it would dry faster. Well, lead acetate has a sweet taste. In fact, it was given the name sugar of lead. Anyways, children were going around eating paint chips off of the floor or walls because it had a sweet taste to it. But of course, ingesting any level of lead is dangerous. It can cause irreversible brain damage in children or serious damage to the kidney and nervous system in both children and adults. Honestly, because of how dangerous it is, it's something that should have never been invented. Moving on to number nine, we have Alestra. And if you guys are liking this video so far and want to see more videos like it, then make sure to smash that like button and let me know in the comments below. Olestra is a fat substitute that apparently contains no calories, no cholesterol, and no fat. So sounds healthy, right? Wrong. So people were using it to make high fat foods like potato chips to make it, you know, healthier. Little did they know about the side effects. The big one being it prevents the absorption of certain vitamins and minerals. As a result, they would go undigested through the intestines and cause a number of digestive problems. Nowadays, a number of countries have banned this product, like Canada and some European countries. But it's still available in the States. Coming in at number 8, we have the wearable parachute. Ever wanted to have the ability to fly on your own? Well, inventor Franz Rijelt did. In fact, he invented a wearable parachute. Basically, it was like one big cloak type sweater thing that you would slip into. He thought it would allow people to jump off of high places and then easily descend down. But it was a very dangerous invention for obvious reasons. On February 4th, 1912, Franz decided to test his invention in front of a crowd. He went to the top of the Eiffel Tower and jumped. Sadly, the parachute immediately folded around his body and he plummeted straight to his death. Moving on to number seven, we have the anti-eating mask. As someone who loves food, this invention would be my worst nightmare. Back in the 1980s, someone thought that this would be an easy way to help people diet or lose weight. Basically, it's a mask slash cage thing that you strap onto your face. When you wear this mask, you're not able to eat, so it forces you not to. Also, it was opened and closed with a key, so someone could strap this mask onto your face and then take away the key, so you're literally forced to sit there and suffer without eating. Definitely not a healthy dieting solution at all. 
Instead, this just seems like some sick, twisted form of torture. In our sixth spot, we have cigarettes. I mean, it's not really a shocker that this one is on the list. Smoking cigarettes is responsible for more than 480,000 deaths per year in the US alone. That's about 1,300 deaths every day. On top of that, smokers die about 10 years earlier than non-smokers. Then you have the fact that smoking can cause asthma, lung disease, heart disease, stroke, oral cancer, throat cancer, tongue cancer, lung cancer, and more. It literally causes its users to become addicted to it and then slowly but surely kills them. Think about what the world would have been like without cigarettes. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with styrofoam. Another super, super bad invention for us and the earth. Now, fun fact, the stuff that we think is styrofoam actually isn't. It's polystyrene. Styrofoam is light blue in color and is used in building insulation. And of course, it takes years to break down. Not only that, if you try to burn it, it will release at least 50 toxic chemicals into the air. It's just another huge polluter that's killing our planet. Moving on at number four, we have the flying car. It's a bird, it's a plane, no, it's a flying car. Ever wish you had a flying car like Ron and Harry in Harry Potter? Well, there was almost a time when this was gonna be a thing. So back in around the 1970s, a man named Henry Smolinski and his partner, Hal Blake, were trying to invent a flying car. They took the wings of an aircraft and configured it onto a car. As you can imagine, they had a quite difficult time with this. At first, they experienced a number of engine failures, and then there were problems with the plane's wings. On September 11th, 1973, Henry and Hal were taking their invention for a spin when the wings detached from the vehicle during a test flight. The car crashed down into a pickup truck and burst into flames. Both inventors lost their lives. So as cool as a flying car sounds, maybe let's not invent it, okay? Sure, it would free up road space, but like imagine getting into a car accident midair. It would be super messy and dangerous. Moving on to number three, we have the radium products. Before we knew how dangerous radium was for us, doctors and companies were using it in a number of products. It was being put in water, toothpaste, makeup, etc. It was thought to be this magical substance that would make you healthier and more attractive. Little do they know, it could kill you. There was this one man whose name was Eben Byers. He was taking this radium powder which he believed would increase his sex drive. In the end, his lower jaw fell off because he was using this so much. Like what? That's terrifying. Moving on to number two, we have the car dog sack. Now, I can't believe that someone genuinely thought that this next invention was a good idea. Basically, back in the 1930s, someone was like, who wants to ride with their dog in the car with them? No, let's put them on the outside of the car. Someone invented a dog sack that hooks onto the dog and then onto the outside of a car. Then you literally just drive along with your dog just outside of the car, flapping in the wind. Hello, this is wrong for a number of reasons. One, that is super unsafe for your poor little dog. Imagine taking a sharp turn and then the dog just like is swinging side to side. Number two, what if you get into a car crash? Sorry, but doggy would be the first to go. Also, I know that dogs like sticking their head out of the window when in cars, but this is way different and just straight up dangerous. And in our number one spot today, we have plastic bags. I mean, plastic in general is super bad for the environment. But today, let's focus specifically on plastic bags, which are polluting our earth. So the plastic bag was invented in the 1960s and was credited to Swedish engineer Sten Gustaf Thulin. At first, it was great, you know, so convenient. You could grab this tiny little bag, you know, do a little shake it out, shove things in, and then just toss it when you're done. Little did they know how big of a problem it would become. For starters, in America alone, 100 billion plastic bags are used a year. That's just in America, one country. In order to make that many bags, it requires 12 million barrels of oil. Not only that, but less than one in seven bags are actually properly recycled. Most of it are just thrown in the landfill. And it takes 1,000 years to degrade. And even then, they don't break down completely. 
Instead, they become microplastics that absorb toxins and continue to pollute the environment. There's literally no benefits to using them at this point. Lastly, birds often mistake shredded plastic bags with food. Same with sea turtles. They think that the bags are jellyfish in the ocean. And fish are starting to be found with plastic in their stomach. It's said that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the sea than fish. So we would have been way better off without this invention. Starting off this countdown, we have the Iron Chair. Imagine the Iron Maiden, but in chair form. Basically, this was a torture device used in the Middle Ages. Victims were placed onto a chair that was filled with hundreds of sharp spikes. There could be anywhere from 500 to 1500 spikes. They were strapped into the chair and when their restraints were tightened, the spikes would dig into their flesh. And they often left the victims there for hours, even sometimes days, just suffering. Sometimes there was a hole on the seat and then a fire was lit below them. But the most common way this chair was used for was actually psychological torture. The victim was often strapped in and then would have to watch another person die in front of them. It was either you confess to your crimes or you die from the chair or die another painful death like the person you saw die. This device was used until the late 1800s in Europe. And at number nine, we have the chain smoker and I'm not talking about the band here. But if you guys are liking this video so far, make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps me out. This invention was created for those who wanted to smoke not one, not two, but 20 cigarettes at one time. That is lung cancer just waiting to happen. But it was pretty popular in the mid 20th century. So this invention was bad for a number of reasons. Number one, cigarettes can kill. Imagine smoking 20 at once. Think about what that would do to your teeth, gums, skin, and lungs. Also, think about how expensive it would be to fuel that addiction. In our eighth spot, we have the breaking wheel. The breaking wheel was an ancient device used to torture and or kill prisoners. Typically, it was used during public executions. Basically, how this device works is it's a giant wheel with spokes. The person was then strapped to the wheel and then beat, or the wheel was slammed down on them. The most common thing would be having them lay on the wheel, and then the executioner would hit them. Their body was woven between the spokes of the wheel so that when they were hit, their limbs would give away and break. It's really gruesome. Either they were hit until death, or they were just left there after being badly injured to die a slow, painful death. Moving on to number seven, we have the beauty micrometer. This device was basically a way to make you feel really crappy about your appearance. So it was designed in the 1930s and was used as a beauty calibrator to see how beautiful you were and what areas needed more work. And those areas that needed work were where the makeup was applied. The machine itself looked like a medieval torture device with like screws and these weird strips attached to it. The machine itself was made by a beautician Max Factor Senior. Yeah, yes, a man telling women how to look. Anyways, this machine is terrifying and its users would often have terrible headaches after wearing this device. Coming in at number six, we have the mass shaving machine. And this invention is exactly what it sounds like. This was popular back in the 19th century. It allowed barbers to shave 12 men at the exact same time. This device would first coat everyone's face with shaving cream or whatever they used back then. And then there was a blade hooked onto it and it would go and shave the men's face. No, just no. Everyone has different face shapes. That blade could come down and slice your face or something. I'm just glad it isn't around today. I know everyone wants efficiency, but this invention could go wrong for a number of reasons. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the flatulence filtering underwear. This one has got to be the weirdest one on this list. Basically, if you're a person that has really bad gas, don't worry, this underwear has got you covered. Basically, if you toot, the underwear somehow filters it so no odor comes out. No, I'm sorry, that's just weird as heck. Please, let's not make this a thing. Next thing you know, a company is gonna come out with like underwear that makes your farts smell like things, like strawberries or marshmallows. I don't need this becoming a trend, okay? Like, ooh, who has the best farts? No. Moving on to number four, we have the creeping baby. If dolls creep you out, then you would not be a fan of this invention at all. In 1871, a man named George P. Clark invented this doll baby thing. 
His goal was to make a doll that crawls exactly how a baby does. But boy, did it turn out really creepy. So the doll's head, arms, and legs were made out of painted plaster. From there, they were hinged onto a brass clockwork body. The doll then moves forward by rolling along on two toothed wheels. But honestly, it just looks like a creepy robot baby. So not only is this doll terrifying looking, but it can slowly creep along. Yeah, no, just no. Let's just leave it in the past, no thank you. In our third spot, we have the revolver camera. Again, it's just as it sounds. Basically, it was a gun that would take a picture when you pull the trigger. Yeah, you heard me correctly. It was meant to take a photo exactly when the bullet hit the target. Okay, but don't worry, there were no bullets in the camera when they took the photos. Basically, in around 1938, this device was created. A tiny camera was attached to the underside of the barrel and the front of the trigger guard. It was attached so that every time the trigger was pulled, it would snap a photo. Now, there's no evidence that this gun was actually used. They only used it for trial photo shoots. And like I said, it was used without bullets. Or so that's what historians assume. Sadly, we don't know much about this invention and its purpose. Was someone trying to make something cool? Or did they want to take photos of their victims? Either way, that would be super bad to bring back. Uh, you can imagine why. Like, here, let me take your photo, and then everyone screams and runs away. Moving on to number two, we have the thumb screws. This was a common form of interrogation used in medieval Europe. If the criminal was not behaving or giving the information that they wanted, then they would resort to using this device. Basically, it was a vice that would clamp down on a person's thumbs or fingers. Then the vice was slowly tightened putting more and more pressure on the person's thumbs. Also, they were locked in place with a padlock, so they couldn't escape. They were left there until they made a confession. If not, their fingers were shattered. And in our number one spot, we have the head pressure. Just the sound of this invention alone is gnarly. And it's pretty self-explanatory. The device was basically a vice for the head. I know. I know, it's gross. So basically, it was a metal device that hooked onto a person's jaw and then head. Then the executioner would twist the handle and it would push the head and jaw together. And then you get it. I'm telling you, there were some pretty sick people back in the day. They had fun with torture. On top of that, some versions of this device had a little thing at the front to catch the victim's eyeballs when they popped out. Mmm, yum. Mm -hmm. 